Hold on to your keyboard and double check your firewalls, because we're about to plunge into the adrenaline pumping world of notorious tech outlaws. We'll uncover the unbelievable sagas of notorious tech criminals like Albert Gonzalez and shadowy collectives like Darkseid. The truth can be stranger than fiction in this world, and we're set to discover why. Number 1. Albert Gonzalez Albert Gonzalez really made a name for himself in the hacking world. He's known for pulling off the biggest credit card theft ever. We're talking more than 170 million card and ATM numbers, taken from big name places like TGX, Heartland Payment Systems and even 7-Eleven. Back in 2010, the feds gave him a solid 20-year sentence. The guy started out young too. Imagine. He was just 14 when he first hacked into NASA. He eventually got mixed up with the cybercrime group Shadow Crew, where he'd swap stolen card info and fake documents. His life got a little messy in 2003, when he was caught making phony ATM withdrawals, but he managed to cut a deal. He turned informant for the Secret Service and even helped bring down Shadow Crew. Funny thing is, he never really stopped hacking, even while he was playing informant. He was really good at it too, using all sorts of advanced tactics to break into corporate networks and snag credit card data. He even started recruiting other hackers for his operation he called Get Rich or Die Trying. He spent big on luxury hotels, cars, parties, pretty much anything, you name it. He even buried cash in his parents' backyard. And finally, he was nabbed in 2008 when one of his crews spilled the beans to the cops. Gonzalez pleaded guilty to a laundry list of charges like conspiracy, computer fraud, wire fraud, and serious identity theft. He had to hand over more than $2.7 million in cash and property. He's serving his time at the Federal Correctional Institution in Terre Haute, Indiana. Number 2. Max Butler Speaking of long prison sentences, there's this other character you should probably know about, and his name is Max Butler. Folks also know him as Max Vision or Iceman, who got one of the longest sentences ever given at the time for hacking the United States a whopping 13 years. He got nailed with two counts of wire fraud, which included stealing almost 2 million credit card numbers and racking up around $86 million in fraudulent charges. Max was pretty much a hacker from his teenage years. He even got arrested for nabbing chemicals from his high school lab. Later on, he did freelance presenting and security consulting, but he never quite left his hacking hobby behind. In 2001, he ended up in federal prison for an attack script that patched security gaps on thousands of Pentagon systems, and he left himself some back doors for his own personal use. When he got out, he fell in with a new crowd who showed him the ropes of carding, that's stealing and using credit card data. He got his hands on credit card numbers by hacking banks, businesses, and even other hackers. He'd sell the numbers to his new friends who made fake cards and bought goods to resell on eBay. In another bold move, Max took over the online card or forums. These are where hackers and fraudsters deal in stolen data, fake IDs, and specialized underground services. To cement his power, he'd ban rival hackers and he'd even nab their data. But like all these stories go, he did get caught. The FBI arrested him in 2007 after a lengthy investigation. He pleaded guilty in 2009 and got that 13-year prison sentence we mentioned earlier. On top of that, he was told to pay $27.5 million in restitution to his victims. Number 3. Jensen James and Jetta Back in the days, there's another guy who made headlines, Jensen James and Jetta. This dude was deep into creating and stealing botnets, which are basically networks of infected computers. These infected computers, known as zombies, funnily enough, could be remotely controlled and used for stuff like DDoS attacks, spamming, and click fraud. Now, DDoS attacks are when a site gets flooded with so much traffic that it can't handle it, and it goes down. And Chetta, who didn't finish high school, got his hands on a worm called RxBot. He used it to build a huge network of infected computers. We're talking around half a million systems here. And get this. 
Some of these computers were in pretty high security places, like the China Lake Naval Air Facility in California and even the Defense Information System Agency in Virginia. Then he did something clever. He built a website where he rented out these zombie computers to hackers or spyware companies for all kinds of shady stuff. The FBI finally got him in November 2005 by setting up this elaborate sting operation. They basically tricked him into showing up at their office under the guise of picking up computer equipment. He got caught up in this big crackdown called Operation Bot Roast. In May of 2006, Anchetta pleaded guilty to a bunch of felonies, including computer fraud and money laundering. The judge gave him a 57-month sentence, which was almost five years, and it was one of the longest sentences for this kind of crime. He had to give up his BMW and more than $58,000 that he made. Plus, he had to pay $15,000 to the US government for messing with military computers. Number 4. Kevin Mitnick Okay, so let's switch gears to another hacking heavyweight, and that man is Kevin Mitnick. This guy is a former hacker turned computer security consultant and author who used to be America's most wanted cyber criminal. He cracked into all sorts of systems, from Motorola and Nokia to Sun Microsystems and even the Pentagon. He swiped software, passwords, confidential info, and even sweet-talked people into giving him access or information. The FBI finally caught up with him in 1995 after chasing him for three years. They thought he was a national security risk. He faced charges on a whole laundry list of things, including 14 counts of wire fraud and unauthorized access to a federal computer. He ended up pleading guilty to four charges and got 68 months in prison in 1999. The authorities were so scared of what he could do that they put him in solitary confinement for eight and a half months because they thought he could start a nuclear war just by whistling into a payphone. Mitnick's arrests and trials stirred up a storm. Many hackers and activists argued that he was treated unfairly, being more curious than malicious. They believe he didn't cause real harm and that his threat level was overblown by the government, infringing on his rights. His story inspired various books, films, and documentaries. After he got out of prison, Mitnick turned things around. He founded Mitnick Security Consulting, which does penetration testing and security training. He's also part owner and chief hacking officer of Know Before, a company that helps organizations protect themselves against phishing and social engineering attacks. He's written books on hacking and security and is a regular speaker at security conferences and events. And number five, Dark Side. Moving on to another criminal mastermind, we've got a group called the Dark Side. Now these folks are all about ransomware and extortion. If you're not familiar with ransomware, it's basically nasty software that locks up your data and then demands cash in order to unlock it. Extortion, on the other hand, is all about threats. Pay up or else. Most people think Darkseid is hiding out somewhere in Eastern Europe, but they're not funded by any government though. They've got a kind of gentleman's agreement not to mess with any country that was part of the old Soviet Union. They can tell where a computer's from by checking its language settings. These guys were like businesses, selling their ransomware to other hackers as a service. And they were quite entrepreneurial. They took a cut of whatever the customer made off the ransom. They even claimed they gave some of their earnings to charity, although security experts think that that was just for show. Their ransomware has got a lot in common with another group called Revil. So some people think that they used to work together, or at least shared a common ancestor. They have gone after around 90 US companies, mostly in sectors like energy, manufacturing, legal, and insurance. They had a website called Darkside Leaks, where they posted some of the data that they've stolen to pressure victims into paying up. Their most famous attack was on Colonial Pipeline, the biggest fuel pipeline in the United States in May of 2021. They encrypted the company's data and demanded $4.4 million in order to unlock it. The attack led to fuel shortages and panic buying in some states. The FBI fingered Darkseid for the attack, and President Biden promised to take them down. Colonial Pipeline ended up paying the ransom to get their operations back online, but they got most of the money back later with help from law enforcement. Darkseid said they were breaking up after the Colonial Pipeline incident because of the heat from law enforcement and some technical issues. But some people aren't buying it and think they'll just rebrand and start up again or even join another group. The web is full of secrets, as you've seen. What cyber legend might be unfolding as we speak? 
Stay curious. But we got a question. Which one of these shook you up? Let us know in the comment section below. And we'll see you in a new video. Take care.